Today we're beginning a new sermon series where we'll be talking about something very big and yet something intimately small. Something that is grand and yet still simple. Something that is otherworld and yet something very present with us every day. What we'll be talking about is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not just something that we're looking forward to in the future, but it's also something breaking into our world even now, even as we speak this morning. Yes, it's it's a future hope of ours to, to live in the kingdom of God in heaven, but it's also already here. We live in the kingdom of God every day. And when we are talking about the kingdom of God, What we're we're going to be talking about is that the kingdom of God is the rule and the reign of God. So wherever that's happening, well, that's where the kingdom of God is. And that's where the kingdom of God is being fulfilled. So yes, the rule and the reign of God will happen in heaven someday, but it can also happen here. It can also happen in our lives. It can also happen in our church, in our world Today, Jesus talked about the kingdom a good bit. And one of those places where he talked about the kingdom was in Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, in chapter 13. And we'll begin with verse 31. Matthew, the the 13th chapter, is full of parables about the kingdom, stories one after another that Jesus is telling about the kingdom of God. And, And beginning in verse 31, he says... The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed that someone took and planted in his field. It's the smallest of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the largest of all vegetable plants. It becomes a tree so that the birds of the sky come and nest in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of God is like yeast which a woman took and and hid into a bushel of flour until the yeast worked its way through all of the dough. The parables that Jesus tells throughout his ministry are these moral stories that always seem to have one overarching moral point. And the moral point of these two kingdom stories is that the kingdom starts small, And we might not notice it fully at first, but it then becomes big. And it takes over whatever it's in. And what I I think is very special is that the kingdom of God starts in this unexpected and underestimated way. And yet, it is very powerful. Jesus talked about the mustard seed, and and he calls it the smallest of all seeds. Now, we know that there are smaller seeds out there. There are are orchid seeds that are one thirty-five millionth uh, of an ounce. I mean, these these are tiny seeds that are out there. But Jesus is using a storyteller's technique to drive home a point here. The smallest seed would never be expected to grow into a large plant. Or just a little bit of yeast, a tiny bit of yeast, would never be expected, or maybe we would underestimate its power, its ability to work through about 60 pounds worth of flour. It starts small, but it grows. It starts small, but but it becomes viral, and it explodes. I know it's easy for us to understand this viral concept nowadays, isn't it? Last year, we we had a squirrel that got into the balcony of the church, and we posted a clip from that service online, and, and well, we simply thought it was funny, but the next thing we knew, it had gone viral. Uh, we, we found ourselves being interviewed on TV shows, news shows from around the country, and, and we found our, our story being picked up by newspapers and online news sources around the country. And I mean, it, it, was, it was overwhelming 
how viral it went and how quick it happened. It was unexpected, and we definitely underestimated it. But it went viral. Then, of course, there's what we've been dealing with this spring, the outbreak of COVID-19. Back in January, many people thought it was their problem, whoever they were, it was their problem. And some even said that it was nothing for us to worry about. It, it was unexpected, and it was definitely underestimated, and it went viral. The kingdom of God, it comes out of nowhere. It's unexpected, and it's underestimated. And it's appropriate that Jesus is the one who is telling us about the kingdom and and about all that the kingdom means and all that the kingdom does and, and how big the kingdom is. I mean, after all, well, he knew the kingdom. And after all, Jesus was someone who was unexpected and underestimated himself. He knew what this was like. You remember the story that when two people who later on became disciples, Philip and Nathaniel, were having one of their first conversations that's recorded, Philip is telling Nathaniel all about how he had met the Messiah, and the Messiah was from Nazareth. And Nathaniel's first words were, how can anything good come out of Nazareth? No one expected Jesus to be the Messiah, and no one could predict that he would change the world. Later on in the Acts of the Apostles, Peter and John are preaching and teaching at the temple and performing miracles in Jerusalem, and the religious leader sees them, and they realize that these two people, these two men are uneducated And they're just plain, ordinary people. And yet they're doing these extraordinary things. To the Jewish religious leaders, the disciples were unexpected and they were definitely underestimated. And yet through the power of the Holy Spirit, they were doing what God had called them to do. The kingdom of God is unexpected and it's underestimated. Often when, when we think about it, we always, we tend to think about those the big end time kind of kingdom. And maybe, it, and maybe that's what we need to think about at certain times in our lives to draw close to that image and to feel the power and the beauty of that kingdom. But what if we stopped every so often and thought about the kingdom in a different way? What if we if we wanted to see the kingdom, what if we took the time to notice the little things that God was doing? The little ways that God was at work in our life or in our world. And how could that be the beginning of something big? If I, if I allow that little work that God is doing to grow, how could it change me? How could it change my world? Let's look at the other parts of this parable. The bigger meaning of this parable. That the kingdom of God ultimately becomes unstoppable. The kingdom of God has the power to take over and to grow bigger than we ever imagined. It starts small, but it it becomes a viral movement that can't be stopped. Jesus talks about the kingdom because he knew the kingdom He knew what was coming. He knew what was possible. He knew what what it would be like to live in the kingdom. And so he tells us, he tells us this is coming and this will be great. Jesus tells us that the kingdom is like a mustard seed that someone plants in the garden and it grows and it grows and it grows. Now I have to admit that I'm really not much of a farmer, and I know that shocks you. 
but I had to do research on this to really understand what Jesus was talking about because we know it's not the tiniest seed in all the world. What is he talking about with this? And what makes the mustard seed so special is that it produces an abundance of seeds when it grows, when the plant grows. And if you're, you know, as you watch it, the wind will carry it and the seeds will spread and soon your entire garden can become mustard if you're not careful because the mustard seed just does that. Jesus says that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, and it's a mustard seed that someone planted. You see, we have to be intentional about accepting the invitation that God has given us to to be saved through our relationship with Christ and and to be connected to Him and and to welcome the kingdom in our life. And, And when we do that, the seed is planted. We do that, the the seed is planted, and and it can spread through all the areas of our lives as we grow to be more and more like the person that God created us to be. The same goes with the story of the woman and the yeast. Now, I have to admit that, that most of my understanding of yeast and bread and things like that comes from watching Pioneer Woman on Saturday mornings on the Food Network. But with a story of yeast, this small amount of yeast goes into 60 pounds of flour and it will go through all of it. If you intentionally allow it in, if you mix the kingdom of God into your life, then it will spread and it will influence all that you are. It has the ability to take over if we let it. So what Jesus may be saying to us today is that we should allow the kingdom of God to take over. To take over our life. To take over who we are. To let the kingdom of God work its way all through through our life. All through the good parts and the bad parts. and The parts that we show and the parts that we hide. And I know that that's hard for us because we usually allow the world around us and the culture around us to tell us and who we are and to form us and to shape us into what it wants us to be. But we are called to allow the kingdom of God in so that it can grow, so that it can take over our lives. These two parables that Jesus told about the kingdom both started with action. A man planted the mustard seed. A woman mixed in the yeast. And then they took over. Where in your life today do you need to mix in the kingdom of God? Even if you start in a small way, where do you need to mix in the kingdom of God? In what situations do you need to plant the seed of the kingdom of God? Even if it's just the one seed, the one tiny seed, the one tiny way that you do it, where do you need to plant the kingdom of God? If you will welcome the kingdom of God into your life, into your situations, into your issues, into your problems, into your family, into your work, even in the smallest way, it may be unexpected, And you might underestimate it, but the kingdom of God has the power to take over. And wouldn't that be amazing? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.